Will we get any more Halo Infinite news for the rest of this year? And what are the repercussions of the bad press that 343 is beginning for the armor customization? Talk about the Infinite Shotgun and Dummy Thick Spartans. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again. I'm doing a commentary of a little Q&A session with you, the community. I went on my community page, guys. I'm going to ask you a question about Halo Infinite. Do you have any questions about it? Let me know. If you want to take part in the next Q&A, make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when those notifications do go live so you can get your questions in. Kesu Boy asks, what if nothing Halo related is shown in November? Do you think the community will go crazy? I don't think there will be any kind of outrage or anything. If we get nothing the rest of this year, I strongly believe we'll know something because technically this game is supposed to be done by now, you know, on the original time frame. I think a growing concern would start coming around where they would have to mention something or reveal something about the game. It would only be bad if there's some expectations going around and that's when the community would go crazy. That with this Xbox event that's happening in November, which originally was kind of rumored that there was going to be like a reveal of some sort with Halo Infinite. I actually made a video on it and literally like eight minutes later that day, Flowbro, a known insider, said that the November Xbox event is more just kind of like a community play date kind of thing and celebration. Not necessarily anything with news or press, which to me is a major bummer. I was really looking forward to having some form of news happen this year, guys. I do strongly feel that we will get some kind of reveal of Halo Infinite before the end of this year. I have seen 343 has been doing a lot of community play days on their Twitch channel, and the production on it is pretty good. Yeah, you know, they've been they tested out the Halo Force flighting uh, the other time, and I feel like what they're trying to do here is kind of like do some test runs with the stream, see how the community reacts to it, and how they can you know do a proper production of playing this game while working from home. Because previously these community play date streams, they would just go into the room downstairs, fire up the Xbox, throw on the computer and stream. Pretty straightforward and easy. This one, not so much. And the production value in these new streams are pretty good. So I would think we'd probably get like a 343 special live stream, kind of like how we've seen with Cyberpunk doing their live stream reveals. Now I wouldn't expect anything that revealing that we have been seeing from CD Projekt Red for their uh, you know Cyberpunk live streams, though I do think we're gonna get something. I'd be so surprised if we get absolutely nothing the rest of this year. I think maybe kind of like maybe like an end of the year stream, just kind of say, hey, thank everyone for your support through this tough time kind of situation. Here's a little Halo Infinite. That's my guess. Now, I did say in the community post, I would answer the highest rated questions. And uh, the highest rated question was this one saying, you think the female Spartans will be thick still like they were in Halo 5 in Reach? I think this question more touches on uh, the portrayal of women in gaming, pretty much. Uh, we do know that the stereotype is like, you know, you have a fantasy game and they're basically wearing a bikini, but that's like their armor. Doesn't make any sense. But, you know, people like it, I guess. Or the dude's like in full gear, covered up, you know, looking all badass. And so, uh, I actually a really good content creator of Ascent Hyperion made a video talking about this. And it actually ended up being like one of his highest rated videos. Talking about how Halo has always portrayed women in, as Spartans in the game rather fairly. Like they don't, you know, they have full set of armor. They're just like a little slimmer. That's about it. They don't like over sexualize their characters, which happens so often in video games, which I think is such a great thing and also rather inviting for people to play as those characters if they would like. So I think, yes, I think Halo Infinite Spartans, we're going to be able to choose male or female for what kind of Spartan you would like. Uh, if it's going to remain dummy thick or whatever you want to you know, refer to it as, uh, probably about the same, honestly. Like I wouldn't expect the physical model of Spartans to change a whole lot with Halo Infinite because I think Halo 5's a portrayal of the human anatomy in a way uh, looks rather accurate. Well, I bet you weren't going to get such a serious response to such a ridiculous question, but it's, it's I think it kind of lends itself to a much bigger conversation than just butts. All right, guys, we have a question on color customization. You knew it was coming. Marauder asked, why did 343 remove primary and secondary coloring? Do you think it's because of marketing for games today? I think the reason why they removed primary and secondary color options is to get people into using the, you know, the coding system that they have. Like they mentioned, it's a seven layer options of however they want to, you know, tailor their, uh, you know, armor customization colorings how they would like with like wear and tear or various intricate colors. 
uh, it does allow more intricate customization for 343 to create things for us to wear. Uh, though, personally, I think it's just, I think it would just, you just have to give people options to choose what colors they want. I mean, you have to build out an amazing UI for all the color customization options that we've had previously. Like there's going to be hundreds of these armor coding options because you need to create enough to where you can identify as yourself in the game. That was the whole point of color customization. And we've seen it kind of trend with other games like Fortnite and you just have like your full on skin that you like to ca have as your character. You play as that character. We've seen it with uh, Modern Warfare where you have operators. So you just choose what kind of operator you want and there are, you know, five or six different variations of that same operator. So I think 343 is trying to go around with that same kind of route uh, I think it also kind of helps lend itself to microtransactions a little more. And I think it also would allow 343 to have more content that they can add into what would be like a the rumored battle pass, season pass kind of thing uh, for, for 343 to have. Now there are going to be free ones you can get. There's going to be earned ones you can have. And yeah, there's also going to be paid ones as well. Again, I think it's going to be very similar to Modern Warfare where you have a, f a set of like free operators you can choose from. You can grind out the game to earn more operators. Or you can straight up just pay for some if you would like. And those paid operators have very unique aspects to them to make it stand out more than just like a variation. Well, so yeah, I think it's kind of going in line with a lot of how other games are doing their customization as well. It gives 343 a little more control and gives people more variety of what they can have. But the thing is, like I mentioned previously, it's like the difference of baking a cookie from scratch or just buying the cookie dough from the store. Like when you make it from scratch, you feel like you made that. But the armor coatings are kind of feeling like they're gonna be like that pre-made cookie dough that you just put in the oven. You don't really feel like you made that cookie, you know? Angry Bird Dude asks, how many of guys are planning on taking the Warhog up that elevator? And knowing the Halo community, and I, I, I'm guilty of it myself, as many as possible. Hugo Menza asked, do you think that the backlash caused by the armor coatings will make 343 to cut the stream of new content even more and keep most of the game features confidential in order to avoid any other marketing failure? Also, thanks for keeping up with the great content, man. Well, thank you very much, Yuga. I appreciate that. So, is 343 going to hold back on any more information because of it's actually been a really big backlash? do this armor coding system announcements. Yeah, I think that they will to be able to, they might have to wait a little bit longer before they can reveal things like this. You know, they had to pretty much talk about the armor coding system because we were seeing it in various promotions with like cookies and sugary drinks and stuff like that. And we're asking, okay, what is this coding system? What's this all about? So they had to mention something, you know, and Unishek tried to give as much context as possible that he was available to do, uh, but it uh, didn't really give us the full story. and. Basically, what happened was that, you know, he said that yeah, we're taking away the primary and secondary colors, but you have all these different armor skins you can put on instead. And when we hear that, we hear options being taken away from us and preset things given to us. And we haven't really given the full picture yet of exactly what this armor coding system is going to be like. I mean, like Sean W has been kind of saying, you know, $5 for purple has been kind of been going around a lot and it does kind of make sense. What 343 should have done is said, hey, we're taking, a, here's what the armor coding system are, is. Yes, we are taking away primary and secondary colors, but look how great this new system is. They gave us those first two parts, the here's the armor coding system. We're taking away this, but they didn't show us why the new system is better. That's what they needed to do with that post, and they didn't do that. Mainly because it sounded like uh, Unishek's hands were tied and wasn't able to reveal any more. He said that they're going to reveal more in the, in, when time comes, but uh, for the moment, yeah, it wasn't that great of a reveal. So moving forward, I think if they're going to do any more announcements like this, they're going to wait until they have the full picture to give us, guys. And that's so... We, had to, we still don't have the full story on Halo Infinite's customization. We don't have the full story on armor coatings or how they're going to work in the game. It's very minimal right now at the moment. It's probably because they're still working on systems within the game that you know are tied to how these different armor coatings are going to be working together. We just have to be patient. And we have been. It just really sucks. LL Yon asks, What do you think of the new shotgun? Do you prefer the old one? Do you prefer the Halo 1 through 3 or the Halo 4 through 5 shotgun? Now the new shotgun for Halo Infinite, 
I think it looks awesome. Man, it looks like a fun gun to shoot. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, but the problem is that, again, like they removed the old one for this new one right now. Do I prefer the older models? I think a little bit more, but maybe just because I'm more personally attached to them, just because I've played with those shotguns in Halo for almost 20 years at this point. And like the redesign for the shotgun with Halo 4 and 5, I thought it was all right. I mean, I still kind of prefer the previous one just because it was less cluttered with so many different things that the new shotgun has. But I think it's still a fun gun to shoot. I mean, there was definitely some awesome shotguns in Halo 5, but very much like we had with Halo 5 and the rocket launcher situation there where they eventually they brought back the classic Spanker rocket launcher. Within the 10 year lifespan that they're saying Halo Infinite's going to have, I'd be very surprised to not see the classic Magnum or the classic shotgun come back to the game. Especially the Magnum, because I think that is just one of those really iconic, you know, guns within the Halo universe when it comes to the weaponry in the, in the game, that I'd just be so surprised to not see it come back in some way or another, if, whether or not it's the Halo 2 version, or it's like the Halo 3, CE, Halo 5, version or Halo 4 versions, you know, I think it's just people just kind of want that gun in the game because it's one of the most iconic weapons in the Halo franchise and to not have it is a bit of a bummer. But also remember in Halo 2, they completely removed the classic Magnum for the faster fire rate version, which is kind of like what the sidekick is now, and they replaced it with the battle rifle. And yeah, there was some outrage about that, but people still like Halo 2 a lot. And so I'm not too bent up about it. So I would like to see him come back, obviously. So there were so many replies to this one. I wasn't able to get to all the questions, guys. So we'll definitely make another video about this. If you like this kind of video, we'll definitely keep making more of them. That's for sure. If you guys want to catch up with any other content that we have been out of the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right over here. Got a link to all my videos right there if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.